some operas are just ripe for the picking, for satire and cartoon. Uh, uh, maybe it's because one loves them so much, or maybe like this one, Peleas and Melisande, it is so full of uh, symbol symbolism and sort of um, half-suggested topics which are taper off in the middle of a sentence. And this is one such drawing. There's a line in the opera. <laughs> Somebody says, Elle a jamais fermé les yeux. She's never closed her eyes. Of course, it's ludicrous. Um, there, are, there are dozens and dozens which can make you smile. That opera is always just on the precipice of farce, or can be. In any case, so here we are, Dr. Sylvain Schnudelbaum, oculist, ophthalmic, and a whole load of specialists queuing up to see Melisande, who has never closed her eyes. Hardly worth a drawing, is it really? But believe you me, when you do this day in, day out for weeks and weeks and years on end, it seems a lot funnier than it probably does to you. Well, this is this is my old friend Franz Grundhaber, somebody who's been on the in the orbit of my life all my all my career. He was a, a fixed singer, fest singer in Hamburg when I was a junior, and even though he was one of the world's greatest baritones, he was perfectly happy being at home and doing relatively small roles. His recording of Wozzeck is uh, the seminal one, the go-to recording with Baron Boim, which is fantastic. But then he started encompassing the Italian lyric roles. And this is France at 70, as is here. And I was fascinated to uh, hear that, so I went, flew to Hamburg to hear him sing it. And it was absolutely wonderful. I'd read that uh, another baritone I had really admired, uh, Giuseppe De Luca, a great baritone from the middle of the 20th century, he had gone to the Met at 70 years old to do his last Rigolettos as well. An extremely difficult role, and uh, one which takes de dozens and dozens and dozens of outings before you'll even really begin to encompass uh, the detail of how to get through this in a healthy manner. So France at 70, but, and he was marvellous. The only rider I'll add to that is he then went on to Vienna to say his goodbyes in Simon Bocanegra. And the public is cruel, of course, as they should be. And it doesn't matter how wonderful France had been. He wasn't up to whatever the standard of the audience required, and they booed him. So he went home at the end of the show. I suppose we all have to know when to stop. Who's going to tap you on the shoulder and, and say quietly, it's time. But uh, Francis stopped now, but he was a great baritone. One of the great one of the great ones of the 20th century, but not one who particularly sought the limelight, who was not a huge star. He was a singer-singer. Um, well, for what it's worth, nothing. Exactly the sort of singer I admired and wanted to aspire to be like. 